Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I painted the first unit of my Stark army for uh, Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game from Simon. Uh, in this case, the Stark Sworn Swords. everyone, welcome back to Mini Junkie. My name's Jarrett. As I mentioned, I'm going to be painting up a unit of Stark Sworn Swords. I actually, when I bought the starter, I, I had the intention of first doing um, a Lannister. These are the uh, Lannister Guardsmen. I first was going to do Lannisters. I really like the gold and red look of, the, of their army. And I think the mountain is a killer figure, etc. But then I started um, my test figures and I wasn't super digging how the red was coming out and and so it kind of went like record scratch and I just put them aside for now I'll probably come back to them because I have them but I decided to go for the Starks and the Starks are tricky because to me there's a high risk of them just looking like dark blobs dark gray units of no personality because of just the nature of the Starks and and kind of like the color scheme that they are. So before I get to the painting, I thought what I could do is talk a little bit about how my thought process as I prepare to work on them and prepare to paint the unit and prepare even long term as I think about how is the army going to come together in terms of painting and basing, etc. The very first aspect of that was this idea of how was I going to base them and how was I going to do the movement tray in terms of texturing etc and, and in fact I did an entirely separate video just on how I do the trays and how I do the bases and it also talks about how I do them specifically as Stark uh, Stark themed. I mean the very first thing I do almost always when it comes to these kind of projects is I look for other tutorials and I you know any painter I think a lot of painters do that I could be wrong maybe I'm just a big copycat but you know, I, I wanted to get a sense for a couple things. One is what's working well for other painters that looks great, and maybe I want to adapt that. What do I think isn't quite working for their, maybe for their stuff that I I want to do differently? You know, sometimes it's, it's all about finding out what you don't want to do. But either way, watching those tutorials kind of gets you in the mindset of how are you going to approach a project. So specifically, Terry Latorco, she did a, a tutorial on painting Stark Sworn Swords very quickly. Great tutorial. I, I recommend it. Um, and I liked specifically how she started with a darker dry brush. Um, and I usually don't start with a dry brush. So I, I definitely thought that was a good approach. And she used um, like a warp lock bronze, like a dark dark brown metallic in my case I do something a little different you'll see what, why another example the wargamer did um, the Lannisters uh, guardsman tutorial and again I watched that even though it's not Starks I just was you know thinking about how is he approaching painting this this uh, true scale kind of miniature and how, what can I learn from that and even photo based and PDF and like blog based uh, tutorials about the Starks. There's not a lot of them out there because the game is new. Uh, but I did look through those just to get ideas and to sort of level set myself for how I was going to paint them. Another thing to consider as you think about painting a unit, let's say uh, for this or for any other rank and file type game or even for 40K is how am I going to approach this such that I can paint a lot of them quickly or, or at least not take a whole year to paint an army because uh, you're going to be painting a lot of troops right so each tray for example is 12 guys um, one approach I take to that is I avoid any kind of mixing as much as I can so even highlights I avoid having to do a highlight where I'm adding white or bone to for several highlights what I'm trying to do is say okay this is the base color this is the wash this is the pot that I'm going to highlight from and just for speed. It, it still is going to look good nine times out of ten, but I am definitely trying to avoid mixing any kind of paints in order to just be able to move quickly on these paint jobs. So I'm painting, like I said, I'm going to paint a unit in an assembly line fashion. That's something you probably have heard of before with units. So for example, paint all the tabards, paint all the metallic, paint all the swords, etc. all the way through and just basically a full unit rather than do half a unit or two units. Uh, and so, and also like maybe I'll finish the sworn swords, then do a a, uh, a hero or a character like Rob Stark then I'll go back and do maybe the Umber Berserkers just to avoid monotony which can really bog your project down as well also when it comes to these units what happens is uh, I like to think about what do they look like on the table while you're playing right so 
when it comes to highlighting and shading, heavy contrast, attention to detail and neatness is important and having them uh, even chunkier highlights and, and having them pop, I always say pop, like visually have something that sort of draws your eye and sort of, sort of creates visual interest because if you were to just, let's say, dry brush them with, uh, you know, lead belcher and hit them with a wash and then do a dark gray cloth, they're going to look like black blobs on the table. They're, they're just not going to have any kind of pop or visual interest to them and they will just look sh sort of shapeless, right? Because your eye just can't from the, di you know, you think about that three foot rule from a distance, you just don't see anything. That's why my Starks, for example, I'm using a fairly bright colored uh, cloth and tabard even though technically probably a darker gray would look more stark like um, i want to create contrast between and the same thing with the armor i'm doing as much as i can i'm doing like a dark gritty type of armor versus having bright armor bright cloth and the last thing is i mentioned details well that's like having dirt or blood a little bit of blood uh, on certain weapons and shields, just little bit touches that bring out a little bit of more interesting detail as opposed to every single guy is just clean and perfect and, and there's nothing, if you do lean in on the table or do take a picture, what's interesting about that unit, what stands out a little bit. And the last thing I do before I get to painting, sorry, I know I'm talking a lot on this one. Before we get to painting, the last thing I do is I do a test model and I did a test model before painting this unit for you guys on the Stark, that's where I try these things out and see how they work in practice. That's where I try what light color am I doing the tabard as? Is that a light blue? Is that a, um, is that more of a bone? Is it a light gray? What is that? So I do a test model and that's where I try out if there's, if I make a choice that I don't like, it's only one model. It's either easy to fix or he'll just blend in and it won't matter that much when I come to my final, uh, color scheme for the unit. Same thing's going to be happening with the uh, Umber Berserkers, for example. When I try to come up with a red, reddish or red brown, I'm going to use test models, one or two, to try those out and see which one looks best. And, and it was the test model for the Lannister Guardsmen that I did that kind of threw me off that project for a little while because I wasn't happy with the test model and I didn't see a clear way forward to fix it yet. So I'm probably going to strip him, strip a few guys and uh you know come back to them later when i want to try again so to speak but the test model showed me i wasn't quite there mentally as far as what those colors were going to be so that's enough talk a lot of talk i hope you're still with me if you're interested in the uh these videos about the song of ice and fire miniature game i'm going to almost certainly do more of them including character models like rob stark and sansa stark and the wolf was it gray wolf anyway i should know that um, and more units and so that includes certainly a lot more stark so definitely think about subscribing and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of these videos that's enough preamble let's get right to the painting table and i'll walk you through how i painted these all right guys so here's a look at the finished unit that we'll have by the end of this tutorial start out with a heavy dry brush of this new paint called boiler black from uh, p3 privateer press uh, it's a metallic paint it's not black and you want to get some good coverage everywhere don't worry about getting it on the cloth etc for this step you could also use lead belcher Next is a dry brush with chainmail or runefang steel. I'm coming at it from sort of the top left as you view the model right now, so where that metal shoulder pad is. So that, the left side of the helmet, the upper forearm, and just so as if the light is shining down from that side, and also the upper quadrant of the shield. And then I did a smooth coat on every blade so that it wasn't dry brushed and looked more pristine. Now for the cloth of the tabards, uh, I settled on P3 Frostbite as a very light blue that's almost white. You just want to get a solid coat, you may have to thin it with some water or some thinner medium to keep it flowing nicely over several, uh, several troops. Then I wash over the Frostbite after it's dry with dark tone mixed with quick wash medium, three parts tone to two parts medium, and just uh, wick up any pooling you see that's going to look bad with your brush. So part of their sleeves and beneath the chainmail are is like an undersuit and I painted that with Crixbane Highlight from P3. For all the straps and belts I used P3 Bootstrap Leather, just one coat, nice and even. And no, this video is not sponsored by Privateer Press. All the faces got a base coat of Bugman's Glow from Citadel, GW. And when that was dry I used a highlight of Cadian Flesh Tone just on the nose, cheekbones and chins to kind of pronounce the facial features. 
by now the earlier wash is dry so I come back with frostbite and re-highlight all those cloth areas to bring out some of the brightness and contrast. The boot's got a base coat of coal black but you could use any black. Next I dry brush the shields with Kerak stone but you could use really any light color because what we do then is we come back with brown ink, Vallejo game ink, and we basically tint that so it looks like wood. I used rhinoxide and other dark colors for mustaches and beards. You want them to be dark so that they show up from three feet on the tabletop. Light colors won't show up very good. Before filming, I, I base coated the leader's cape with uh, Troll Blood base from P3. It's a really nice color. It looks good with uh, the frostbite we've been using on the front. And then I also use this as the base color for the banner. When that's dry, I did some inelegant shading using Gravedigger Denim. That's a new color from P3. I just painted in the shading in the recessed areas, including on the on the cloak that I talked about. Uh, definitely looks pretty chunky and messy, so I come back later and clean that up. I want these guys to look like they're on the battlefield in the middle of a fight, so I took some um, Citadel Technical Paint uh, Typhus Corrosion, and I just stipple that on a little bit on the, the tabards and on the shields and boots and things, just in, irregularly and not too much. A little goes a long way here. For the trim around the banner, I use Crixbane Highlight as I felt it would tie in with the unit fairly nicely as that's the same color we used for their under suit thing. I thought about doing the sword hilts in like a gold or something, but I used Boiler Black to make them dark metal because I feel like that looks a little grittier, a little more like the Northerners. For the banner, I painted the wolf symbol black. Very straightforward, use any black you want. Decided not to be super lazy with the boots, so I took Thunderhawk Blue and did a, a highlight feather down sort of like one edge of the boot. It's hard to describe, but you're trying to show the light catching the front and back of the boot. I said I'd avoid mixing, but for the banner, I did use a bit of white with the troll blood as a highlight on the raised parts of the banner. Also on the back of the captain, so I highlighted the raised parts of his cloak with this. I think I did one, maybe two highlights, because again, we're not spending too much time on this unit. Then I did the same thing with the edge of the banner where I highlighted the raised bumpy areas of it uh, where the Crixbane highlight was. I added a little white to that. Paint the banner pole brown. I used Mornfang brown. You can use any brown. This is an optional step. I took uh, Vallejo Game Ink black, black and did a bit of black lining just to sort of separate the tabard from the chain mail and a few other areas. Totally optional. Did a really quick job on the fur on the back of the captain. I just used Menoth white base as a solid base coat. Then I come back with um, Vallejo Game Ink sepia. Just give it an all over wash and bang, looks good enough like fur to me. To continue with that battlefield look, I gave them a little bit of blood splatter here and there and on some of the swords, not every single guy. I use blood for the blood god and that is stippled on and then I stipple on a bit of that mixed with a tiny bit of uh, Vallejo black ink. And here's the finished unit. I don't varnish my guys who are plastic very often anymore because I find it really dulls them down and takes away the shine of the metallics, etc. Maybe I do it over ink sometimes because they can be unnaturally glossy. But that's it. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. I really like how these turned out and they feel uh, suitably starky. And that's it. That's the first unit of Starks completed. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative, which is my goal. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing more of these. Consider liking and sharing and subscribing to the channel if you want to see more and see the channel grow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.